welcome back. And we're moving into our first conversation for today as we dive into the role of unionism in Belize's development. Uh, and here to have this conversation with us is a lecturer from the University of Belize, Joseph Sampson. Good morning and morning. welcome. Good morning, Marlene. Good morning, and welcome. <laughs> well, I know you always appreciate yeah. the opportunity to have a live history lesson. <laughs> and yeah. uh, this is one I believe that is, is very uh, crucial for people yeah. to understand about our development. Yeah. And um, of course, we're going to get started just kind of looking back to the genesis of the development of unions in Belize. Um, you know, um, the actual um, consolidation of unionism in Belize um, began in the 1930s with um, Antonio Severanis. At that time, they never called them unions as such, but it was at that point that in a sense that, um, what should I say, the, um, the conception took place, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I would also like to point out that unionism in Belize is not uh, singular, nor is it isolated, right? Yeah. It, and it is just like everything in history, it's part of an entire framework, right? And uh, the union, Trade unions, as we know them, really had a lot of roots all the way back in the Industrial Revolution. Mm -hmm. And in fact, they have had roots from the time when people start to work for other people. And they have, you know, especially in the capitalist system, where the idea is, look, the, 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 the business people want to make as much money as they can. Mm -hmm. So they will use these workers to make as much money as they can it's and pay margins. them, right? And so workers have to look out for themselves, right? And um, we saw in the 1890s in Belize, um, when there were labor riots, and at that time there were no trade unions in Belize. We also saw 1931, right? Uh, the uh, riots led by Tom Alexander in Belize again. It was also the time of the 1931 hurricane. Things were very bad. So people were looking out to try to better their um, situations, and there were riots, right? Now, somewhere around 1934, Antonio Sabaranis actually then got into um, establishing this. Um, this um, group of people, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Laborers Unemployed Brigade. It was not a, a, a trade union in the true sense, but it was an organization which began to really highlight the plight of workers in Belize, right? Um, now, things became really, really set in the 1940s, right? When they actually um, started a union, at that time, it was not a union in the beginning, but in 1943, actually it started in 1939. It was established as a union in 1943, mm -hmm. all right? And um, shortly after that, we, we started to have the, the nationalist struggle, right? So the unions then become a part of the nationalist struggle. As a matter of fact, the, um, the, the workers' union in the late 1940s um, actually joined with, the, the, with members of the People's yes. Committee in 1950, right, and then they became a part of the People's United Party when it was established on September 29th, 1950. Mm -hmm. So there was this inextricable link between unions and, trade, and, and, and political parties. And further down, uh, we have the, the Public Service Union, which um, also was linked to the United Democratic Party. So in Belize's history, uh, unions and political parties have been linked, and, but in most cases, the political parties have dominated the unions. So, um, and not only dominated, but in many instances have divided the unions when it suits their purpose. I've always yeah. found this to be interesting about our history for the simple fact that it highlights where the common cause of looking at workers' rights has become the catalyst for political parties and essentially their first manifesto promise as they move <laughs> forward or part of their ideologies in, in, in being able to protect the workers, uh, the people who uh, were at that time um, disenfranchised in some way. And so often when we think of unions, we don't realize that, that connection. And we've seen even later on in the future where very active union members then transition into, into the political realm as well. Uh, what are some other examples where you can cite that particular connection? Okay, um, I would like, like to say though that um, going back to Karl Marx, right, mm -hmm. who was the father of um, communism, mm -hmm. um, Karl Marx um, stated that um, 
social conflict was the necessary engine for human growth and development. And wherever you have, well, you know, in, in the United States, they, they tend to talk about them, I call people what they, 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 they uh, the makers and the takers. Mm -hmm. Now, the, um, the business people, the industrialists, they consider themselves the makers. And then they look at the other segment of society as the takers, not realizing that their wealth really comes from the takers, mm -hmm. if you, you want to use that term, which is really a derogatory term. Um, but what has happened within the context of Belize? First of all, for a very long time, the Belizean government was the largest employer. And what they used to do was that whenever some very, very significant, strong union person came on the scene, they transitioned them to either end up as a CEO or some big post in the government. And these same leaders of workers, in a sense, become join the class that oppress the workers. Mm -hmm. And it has been done repeatedly. As a matter of fact, I would dare to say that there were people who saw their future in leading a union so government could pinpoint them and, and move them on to a higher level. That's just my, uh, it's an opinion. I, you know, it's an opinion, but it's an opinion I think that I could use facts to support. Mm -hmm. um, now, of course, Belize's economy has really divested in so many different areas. It has, it has moved from where government is the primary employer to different sectors of the economy that employ people in different ways. The sad part of it, though, is that most workers in Belize are not unionized. Oh. Mm -hmm. Even at the university, where I teach, the lecturers are not unionized. But they the can work, be. The workers are not unionized there. But they can be. Would they form part of They the can because it is legally you are allowed to form a union. I think, and I'll be very honest in saying this, one of the things that has impacted our society is politics. In many instances, we think PUP or we think UDP or even VIP, mm -hmm. right? We think politically. So whenever there is an issue, we tend to look at that issue through whether I am PUP or whether I'm yeah. UDP rather than it's an issue that is affecting the country, affecting the society, if affecting your family. And even in politics, people, you know, go at each other, even in families, mm -hmm. when you have politics. So that happens in the union, and it happens in the union a lot. And we can see it. Whenever there is some event, if there is a teacher's union struggle, there's going to be an attempt to divide the teachers based on politics. The PUP teachers, if it's, a, if it's in the PUP era, the UDP teachers will go to school, the PUPs won't. <laughs> if it's the UDP, it's the same thing. The UDP teachers will go to school, the PUPs won't. Now, there are some independent thinkers who will go either way, right? Um, but the fact of the matter is that politics is very strong in Belize. And, um, and I would dare to say that politics is also one of the factors that is retarding the growth of Belize. I would dare to say partisan yeah. politics, because yes, I, I don't politics, have a right. problem with people being engaged in how yeah. our country is governed. Yeah, right. uh, it's when we want to see it through a particular color lens that right. causes Absolutely. challenges. Exactly. Yeah. Because like the other thing, they say, um, government is a necessary evil. So we have to have a government. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, is, what is interesting is that you, in, in speaking about uh, United, wouldn't, wouldn't the teachers at the University of Belize be eligible to be part of the BNTU? No, no, no. Um, that is, a, that is a strange beast there. Because you have to understand that at the university level, um, generally people are considered lecturers, not really teachers, per se. A kind of teacher. Yeah, right, 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 exactly. Although we call the University of Belize a teaching university, whatever that means. Um, but I, in my own opinion, a teaching university teaches you not to think. <laughs> and I think that people need to develop critical thinking. Mm -hmm. yeah, right, and that's why I am very, I, I favor and I'll be honest with this, I favor the new administration of the university for the simple reason that I believe that they are really trying to elevate. Yeah, trying to develop the university to a point where it's going to be just like any other university, any part of the world, and even attract people to come to Belize. 
It's a hard process. It's a tough process. They need the resources. And I believe that they will get the support of the people to, to push that university. You know, because it's where our kids go. And when we look at what is happening in the United States today, we know we can't run the United States no more. So we better as well build what we have here and build it good. <laughs> <laughs> but, but this is, this is yeah. a good, uh, I think, uh, segue looking yeah. back at, at unions itself. Yeah. What is most essential in the formation of a union uh, from, from what we've seen? Is it the leader who brings together the group or the size of the group who eventually develops their, their, their mandate? The first um, union uh, in 1943, uh, they had a, uh, a membership of uh, 350. Mm -hmm. uh, by 1946, that had gone to about 3,000. And in 1956, politics intervened and it fell to 700. Mm -hmm. Right? So um, any organization, it has to be the effort of both the leaders and the workers. Mm -hmm. Without the workers, you don't have a, lead, uh, a union. And without the leadership, you have a union that is non-functional. Mm -hmm. So you, both are very, very important. But I think what is even more important is what is the propelling and the driving force behind the union, mm -hmm. right? I understand that unionism has to do with bettering the working conditions of the workers. But we also know that that is also a very, very broad uh, understanding because you can better my working conditions at work, but if the conditions in the society themselves are not conducive to a better life, then you have wasted your time and you've wasted my time. So <laughs> there has to be some kind of uh, clarification there in terms of where the union goes. And we know that in Belize, unions have taken up political battles, particularly where sometimes because of certain developments that Belizeans tend to sometimes not trust the political parties. And so, um, you know, what happens then is that the unions take up, mm -hmm. um, it's particularly the Belize National Teachers Union, one of the strongest unions in Belize, mm -hmm. all right? But as I said, at, as usual, whenever it comes to politicizing, that is always used to kind of, you know, dilute the work of the, the union. And it's done, to be honest, I, mean, I support the People's United Party, but I'll be very honest that all the political parties are guilty of that. Yeah. When you have, when you have such a powerful tool, uh, power likes to be absolute. You agree with me? Yes, certainly. Um, and it corrupts absolutely. And it corrupts absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. unions appear to have been probably one of the most powerful engines for change in our country. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know if you'll agree with me again that um, unionism is probably the first organized stance against what was previously slavery. Mm -hmm. Because workers weren't allowed to even associate. And then um, unions, in its other form, took up. Uh, the fight against colonialism, as you, was as you were telling us. Yeah. And then they took on uh, independence. Mm -hmm. And then we've seen in recent years uh, they've taken up corruption. So mm -hmm. could you not fault the political entities for wanting to be a part of a, such a mass movement? I want to correct you there. Though. They don't want to be a part of the movement. They want to run the movement. True. Right? <laughs> They're being a part and running it through different things. <laughs> Um, the history of unionism in Belize, um, really, um, the, the People's United Party, which led the struggle for universal adult suffrage, for um, um, self-government, for independence, they did so on the backs of the unions at that time. And so the unions were an integral part of that anti-colonial movement. Okay. And uh, that is something that, they, they, that has always, and to this day, that is the reason why I think, in my own view, that the People's United Party still tends to be viewed as the Workers' Party. Anyway, you take it. That's, uh, uh, that's an undeniable fact of history, mm -hmm. right? Um, but we also have to look at the social divisions in the society. Well, um, in Belize, is a society where we have 
uh, people divided based on religion, based on uh, ethnicity, based on economic status. And if somebody actually does a study, they'll be able to see which groups of people have a tendency to be a part of the People's United Party and, or to be a part of the United Democratic Party. All right? And then you can also see that division where unions are concerned. You can see the people who are bucking the union, unions, and you can see the people who are fighting within the unions to better the unions. Mm -hmm. And you can explain that along a lot of these different lines that I am pointing out. Mm -hmm. In Dangriga, we have the Southern Christian Union in the past. I don't know how active they are right now. But they have been calling out years and years and years for that port. Why was the port moved from, from uh, Jetty and taken to Big Creek 50 miles away? Mm -hmm. Why? It left a lot of people in Dangriga without employment. And what are the plans going down the road? Because the union has its office, offices that done. We got there still up. They are still trying to keep things going, but they need to be able to place their workers. A very, very important point. Mm -hmm. How many? Oh, sorry. Okay. How many active unions are there in the country? Um, actually, uh, we have an, a, a number of registered unions. But basically, the, the main unions really, from what my, from my, I can recall, will involve the National Teachers Union, um, also involves the, the, um, the, there's this union, I think it's the Christian Workers, Workers union. union, right? And then you have the, um, the, the Public Service Union. Mm -hmm. Those are the main ones. And then you have the umbrella, which is the National Trade Union Congress which covers all these unions and which is also affiliated to, to international unions and inter-American unions and so on. So you have a union structure yeah. in Belize. And then, of course, we have a lot of these other unions that are, in a, in a sense, they're, very, they're kind of dormant or non functional but they are on the books because they're registered. Yes. And, you know, I think one of the things that people assume is that the, the, the cause uh, remains the same. Talk about some of the, the reasons why we have seen or some of the focus that brought these people together to form different unions. Um, again, it is a hard fact of history. But whenever you fight the ruling classes, and when I say ruling classes, I'm talking about the people who have the economic power, people who have the political power, people who have the social power. Mm -hmm. Whenever you fight them, they find ways to divide you. And I'll be very, very frank with this. Right now in the uh, public service union, we hear about ethnic differences. Now, where in the world did workers become, begin to become ethnic? Right? All of us are workers. Just like in the US, they have uh, <laughs> black people, people of color, they're workers. They have mestizos who are workers, and they have whites who are workers. Mm -hmm. And all of them have the same issues, basically. All right? Of course, they divide along, again, ethnic. And in Belize now, we're having an ethnic issue. And, and to be frank, the ethnic issue is Gareth Nakriel, right? Black Belizeans have ethnic issues. Now, where did this emerge? Where did this involve? A couple months ago, we had a very serious situation, which yes. we discussed on this show. Yes. You know? So when you divide workers and like that. Time, the time before that, you had the union standing up for a person who uh, was fired for speaking Garifuna within her workplace. All right, good. So, you understand me? Yeah. So, so but they, a lot of times we are divided and we don't even realize who is dividing us. Just like how in slavery, they used to use the um, same black, you know, black strong guys, drivers, mm -hmm. and put them over the, the umbrella staves and they whip them happily. happily. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so because they were given power. Exactly. Yeah. So the unions are being divided, and in many cases, they don't understand. And, and when they form, at, at one point, a number of these you, um, workers from different, whether it was B, B, B at that time, whether it was uh, BTL, whether it was um, uh, from the banana works or from the sugar works, they were in one union. Mm -hmm. And then... A new group, this was in the 1970s that this division uh, became very, very open. And of course, um, it became worse in 1981 with the um, heads of agreement and independence and other kind of stuff when the, the public servants at that time largely were against 
the move by the government uh, for independence. Yeah. And of course, that was at that time led by the, the, the opposition at that time, the United Democratic Party. So the unions became involved in a political struggle. It was, it was, I was, you know, at that time, yeah, we had um, the, the unions were on strike. Mm -hmm. Some violence occurred in some places. That there, a guy was killed in PG, a guy was killed in Corozal. And then they had to declare a state of emergency. And we went into independence under a state of emergency in 1981, right? With the Public Service Union, which was a union for government workers fighting the government of the day against independence. Now, the question one would ask is, what was the relationship between independence and workers' rights or workers? They may seem far apart, but certainly the political climate the political environment, the political events are what determine how much money you're going to make, how much food you'll be able to afford, what you can so do. Yeah, research. So they're all intricately, um, inextricably, if you may, yeah. intertwined. You can't get away from that. Right? But isn't the problem, isn't the problem in the public service union an issue of leadership? Because if you look at the BNTU who have managed to avoid, I have never heard of a race issue, and teachers are probably one of the most diverse mm -hmm. unions in the country, nationwide. Mm -hmm. um, and you would think that there is um, that same level of divide. Mm -hmm. But my question is, why do you think that it exists as an issue in the PSU and not in the BNTU? Um, we have to. I think we, one of the things in our society is that many times we, we tend to avoid the hard truths. Mm -hmm. The uh, government um, service was always dominated by the Creole sector of the population, always. And eventually, Garifna people began. Because Garifna people were basically policemen, teachers and, teachers and, and, and BDF and, and, and that kind of stuff, right? But eventually, more and more Garifna people became in, involved in government service. And Garifna people, like myself, we're very ambitious. We're ambitious, we're very aggressive, we will fight for what we want, irregardless. Mm -hmm. And so it is a kind of a new spirit that has kind of taken over the public service union, which can be interpreted as a resurgence of a Garifna people trying to take over or dominate. I don't think it's a matter of trying to take over. It's a matter of fighting for our rightful place, wherever we go. Mm -hmm. I'm at the University of Belize. I work there. I've been there. It's going to be 10 years. I'm very outspoken. I don't want to take over the university. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to break up, break up the university. But if I have something that I strongly believe in, yeah. I am going to voice it. Mm -hmm. Because I believe at the end of the day, we're not here to protect ourselves. We're here to make this country a better place. Mm -hmm. And it has become a more urgent need because we can no longer run to America. In fact, we should run from America. <laughs> we have to build this, well, right? And, and I think the, one of the areas that perhaps we haven't really looked at is the importance of having a non-government entity to represent views of persons because of our great uh, uh, political divide between red and blue. Um, you know, when we talk about so many issues in the country or we talk about development, um, we talk about civil societies in Belize. And it's interesting because if we talk about environmental agencies, they're there. There are a couple of women rights agencies working as well. But for the most part, you know, the unions are, are the only representative body at this point in time working towards ensuring that the workers are, or everyday Belizeans, are having their rights met. So it is integral that we have a solid union movement. Um, and, and in fact, as we saw with the BNTU, when they stepped out on a governance platform, um, they were able to achieve certain things that others could not um, because they had the numbers and because they were very determined to follow through. So I, I think that that's one of the things I wanted to look at, just how important it is when the union is strong that we can make progress within the country. Well, there is a song in the BNT which says it's a union that makes us strong. Yeah. <laughs> and I will tell you, uh, the BNTU, I'll just mm -hmm. you in a little bit, BNTU is no organization to play with. 
The BNTU, some years ago, in negotiating teachers' uh, salaries with um, the Esquivel government. The BNTU forced the Esquivel government to give the teachers a 15% raise and not give the public service union a raise because when the teachers were demonstrating in um, Belmapan and, and standing up, the, B, the people from the PSU were from the offices looking out. Mm -hmm. It has always been a thing in Belize where people are afraid to express themselves, which is not good, really. The BNTU also, I will also say the BNTU was also very much responsible for bringing down the Musa government in, in 1998, all right? And right now the BNTU has also forced government into several concessions, all right? So it is an organization to reckon with. I, if I were a politician, I would not play with the BNTU. Right? And they also are disadvantaged yeah. in the fact that, because we hear it every time the BNTU steps out, people say, mm -hmm. oh, well, you're neglecting the children. Mm -hmm. In other words, they use that as, as an example of collateral damage. Um, when in fact, and I think the, the teachers have said very clearly, they're teaching the children how to stand up for what they find is important. In the United States right now, the, um, the Dreamers mm -hmm. from DACA and the children with insurance, they're collateral damage. I mean, this whole shutdown in the U.S., they're, they're using these kids as part of that whole drama that's unfolding there. So kids have always been used as collateral damage, which is a shame. But when, uh, when the union stands up, at the end of the day, it is going to better the conditions of the kids. Of course, I will add this as an educator. I would like to encourage our teachers to get better educated so that they can do a better job in the classrooms. It's no secret that a lot of our teachers are lacking. I mean, let's uh, they might not like to hear it, they might vex with me with, with it, that is the fact. But I know they can do it if they're encouraged and given the resources. Why do we have teachers teaching, for example, in the Stan Creek District? You know, I am always upset about this. We have this, um, EU Sugar Belt project that they have been running up north. Mm -hmm. You have Dangriga right there, man. You have a lot of teachers right there who need to be educated further. I believe that whoever the powers that be need to take a look at what the people in my community need as well. Sure. And um, because we, you cannot build a society where you're spending $200 million in one part of the country and you are neglecting another part of the country. So unions have to get up and raise up because, you know. And, and you know, as you say, unions have to get up and raise up. Something that Marlene said just completely mm -hmm. blew me, which is that, you know, in Belize, as we were talking earlier, there's not that independent voice that we can trust. Um, and the unions really represent the, the conscience of the country. Mm -hmm. And with the absence of strong unions in certain areas, we are actually missing that independent voice. It's almost like prophets in the Bible, when they, uh, when they get up and they tell the king, listen, you know, you're not doing things we are supposed to. And because in your example that you gave, where the teachers stood up and forced the uh, government not to give the PSU their raise, I think the government hit back because there was retrenchment. Mm -hmm. But then there was a change of government as well. Mm -hmm. So the power balance there is extremely important for us as a small country. You agree? And what I was pointing out there too is the, the divide and conquer. The divide and conquer. So when unions, you know, um, I, I was living in Jamaica for some years and there was a general strike in Jamaica once. It locked down the whole country. Locked down the whole country. It happened in Belize, I think it was somewhere around 1997 or uh, before the 1998 general elections, right? So when people are sufficiently aggrieved, the unions can function that way. But the problem is that whenever, whenever we have difficulties, the, norm, the natural tendency is for us as individuals to try to protect ourselves and to protect what we have. Yeah. Yeah. We don't really understand that when we try to protect ourselves and what we have, we are going to lose it eventually anyway. Because when our brothers out there lose theirs, then we don't have anything to hold on to. Mm -hmm. So unity and strength is very, very, very important. But it goes back to the idea that unions are organizations for the workers' cause. And I would admonish the unions, really, while you have your somewhat 
union leaders might have their own political inclinations, that is good. And nothing is wrong with that. But the union should never be used as a vehicle for political activity. Now, there is a difference between political activity and nationalist activities, because nationalism has to do with the country. But nobody should use the union for their own individual political, whether it is UDP or whatever party. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Stick to the rights of workers, the benefits of workers, better working conditions, and a better climate in a country where we can all live happily and peacefully and enjoy the fruit of the land. Mm -hmm. The union has a big responsibility. Yet we've seen, especially of recent, where they have struggled to be able to come together. Um, and we have seen it within individual unions, and we've seen it with the larger unions, uh, the umbrella organization. We've had the past president of the NTUCB right here on this set say they're unable to move forward with issues because they feel that there has been, I think the term he used was political infiltration. Um, and so they cannot come to consensus on certain issues. I think this is, is, is part of what, what concerns me Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not a union member, but it concerns me in hearing that when you have representative authorities of wider uh, groups mm -hmm. not being able to fulfill what is required of them by those workers because of this political um, inclination that they have. So I, I want to talk, you know, I feel like Everything is cyclical. You know, we go through phases and, and we move um, and we say, oh, this has never happened before. But if we dig deep enough in history, we've seen it. And so that's what I wanted to ask. Obviously, this is not something new to unionism. The idea of trying to, you spoke of the divide and conquer. You spoke of uh, people bringing their own agendas to the table. Um, so, so talk to us about whether, in fact, it is cyclical or new to this time. Well, um, history is cyclical. Yeah. What has happened many years ago will happen today, will happen down the road. But in the case of the unions in Belize, from my observation, their problem is more than a political problem. Because, uh, okay, if you accuse any institution of corruption, and you also have corruption in your midst, then you have a problem. Yeah, it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. There is a situation right now within the unions, um, I think it has to do with the teachers union, professors union, of some monies that were set aside through some arrangement yeah. for yeah. the workers, those yeah. people who are working that period. Trust, yeah. Now, mm -hmm. how in the world can you tell me that money that was set aside for a group of people, 1997 to 2000, for example, in 2014, it becomes available to other people other than those it was set aside for? Maybe you could use the interest for those mm -hmm. new ones, but the people from there that time should enjoy. So that has created a level of disquiet yeah. well, that's among a union case. members. That's interpretation yeah, at this point. That's, that's yeah. one thing there. Then, of course, as I mentioned before, you have the, the ethnic situations in certain cases. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you have opportunists. People go into a union because of opportunism. So the union, I believe, the unions, right? Also, and then the unions also need to ensure that while you are making demands, you're making demands for better conditions, you're also helping to create better conditions so those demands can be met. Because if you come and ask you for more pay but you're not producing, where will I get the rest of the money right. to pay you so you can move ahead? You understand? So there are a lot of things that need to be brought to the table. Yeah. And in my, belief, my, my own humble belief is that in our country, one of the things that we, the mistake we make all the time is to kick the can down the road. Oh, let's not talk about that right now. Let's not deal with that. Doesn't right have to now. be my problem. <laughs> right. But one of these days we have to face it anyway. It's like you diagnosed an illness today, you say, oh, I'm gonna doctor tomorrow. I'm gonna doctor next week. I'm gonna doctor the other week. And finally when you can't do it no more, you go to the doctor and tell the boy, go home and wait for the hour. Mm -hmm. You understand me? True, true. Mm -hmm. So our unions, we have one strong union, the Belize National Teachers Union. How long can the Belize National Teachers Union be strong if the other unions are not as strong? And what I find to be part of the perception is because mm -hmm. they're the only unions who speak out on certain issues, they're mm -hmm. seen now as just the voice that opposes for, for, for opposition's sake. <laughs> but if you look at the history of the Belize National Teachers Union, they have taken on every government that I can recall. They have taken on every government when there's an issue 
that they feel. And you, you can go to the history, you can read the newspapers in the past. They took on the Esquivel government, they took on the Musa government, and they took on, they have taken on the borough right. government. That, uh, that's the union for you, the, national, the, the Belize National okay. Teachers Union. Right? Okay. But I, as I said, I will go further. I would encourage the union to also try to take on the matamo of ensuring that our teachers are better prepared. Mm -hmm. you know? If someone were to say that the relevance of unions is dwindling um, because um, there are certain mechanisms that are in place, there's a labor commissioner there, people are more likely to litigate. Uh, if, you, if my boss treats me wrong, I'm going to sue him or her. Um, there are issues of the dwindling size of the political move in the world is to have small government as opposed to big government. Mm -hmm. So the employment with PSU should uh, be reduced. Um, do you see a point in time where the unions, and also I have to put in the social aspect of it too, the, the unionism is one of the last vestiges of people actually coming together in the same room. We live in all these divided little uh, uh, corners. And unionism, like the church, are one of the last few things that put us together. Do you see a point in time in the future where all of these things coincide and the relevance of unions is a bit um, reduced? Well, honestly, my brother, the relevance of many things <laughs> has been reduced. <laughs> <laughs> Technology has even the family. You have you have five, six young people living in a house. You don't hear anything going on. You say, well, they're not communicating, but they're texting to each other <laughs> in the same room. So a lot of things have reduced in importance in the way that we are used to. And the unions are no different there, the churches are any different from that, right? But at the end of the day, there will always need be a need for people of like interests mm -hmm. and people who have the same demands to somehow communicate and organize to get their demands met. And as Karl Marx said, I'm not a communist, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you do agree with this point. I, I, the, the, the point is that he said that social conflict is the engine for human growth. So we can't stop conflict. There will always be conflict. Of you get course. a new government tomorrow, there will be a war with the unions over some matter. Mm -hmm. that, that, that has to happen. It is how it is addressed. That is what determines where things go from here. And in our country, like you said, there is a lot of litigation. Mm -hmm. But honestly, it takes us to the feet of government because laws must be made by government. So government has a responsibility to to study what are the issues and to make the relevant laws. Because if you go to court and try to litigate something that is not in the laws, then you mightn't get the, 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 you know, the, what you want out of it, right? And I have, for example, I have certain questions about certain things taking place in our country right now in terms of our relationship with the United States. I mean, I don't want to get into the international business, but I'm very concerned about how can the US just tell us, look, pick up this person, pick up that person. Yes, you have extradition, which is legal, but if you commit a crime that is relevant to the U.S., but that crime is not relevant to Belize, I don't know. So there are certain things that are probably not in our books, but, and then we, we batch up cases because if you arrest somebody in Belize for something that didn't happen in Belize, how can you use the Belize courts to? Right. You know? well, so all of these, there are a lot of things in this country that we as a people need to sit down and talk about. But we cannot sit down and talk about them if 60% of our population needs to work, 60% of the population needs to be able to find the basic needs of life. You can't talk about anything at your house other than what are your needs if your needs are not met. Okay. Right? Well, that concludes this conversation for this morning. It, the time <laughs> went by so quickly. <laughs> Um, but we really appreciate uh, the look back into our history when it comes to unionism. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you very much for inviting me. We miss Charlie so much already. <laughs> she, <laughs> yes. she's, from our, um, she's from our history department. Yes. And uh -huh. um, we felt so bad yesterday at work because, you know, so we spoke oh, to her yesterday before she left. Yeah. And she's our star. Mm -hmm. um, she has gone to the same institution where our chair went. Mm -hmm. 
And I, you know, our chair was very instrumental also in recommending her to that institution. So we are so it's having. So not so sad after all. She yeah, it's, it's, it's a mixture. It's a mixture of, um, you know, yeah. is what you say. It's a so bitter sweet moment. Yeah, right. That's right. Right. That's right. Okay. But thank you so much. We are going to go ahead and take a break, and when we come back, we will meet the couple we'll be following for this season of From Yes Do I Do right after the break. <laughs>